This month is a month of winning with wisdom. Winning with... And the subtopic is wisdom for healthy living. Wisdom for healthy living. The beauty of life is to live healthy. No one enjoys sickness. Nobody will tell you that I enjoy to be sick. Everybody loves to be healthy, including you. Is that true? And living a healthy life is possible. And it shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. But you need wisdom to live a healthy life. In Psalm 105, verse 37, the Bible declares, it says, He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Two things always go, wealth and health. If you look at the Bible, every time God speaks wealth and health. He brought Israel forth with gold and silver. That means wealth. And there was not one feeble person amongst that tribe. So it's possible for all children of God to live a healthy life. And I came to announce to you from this day, you will enjoy wealth Amen. and you will enjoy health. Amen. I wish you above all that may prosper and be in health even as I so prosper. Every time God talks about wealth, the next thing he wants to enjoy is what? Health. Because if you're sick and you have money, you still have problems. Because your money can be taken with sickness. And if you have money and also sick, so the two must go hand in hand. And you will have the two. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. The new good news translation says, Then he led the Israelites out. They carried silver and gold, and all of them were healthy and strong. You are what? So redemption provides us with divine immunity that confirms our freedom from sickness, diseases, plagues, name them. You are not permitted to be sick and you're not permitted to be poor. It is ending in your life today. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15, I'm trying to lay foundation. And the Lord will take away from thee some sickness, all, all, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which means all the sickness that people in the world suffer. I don't care which with any of them, it will leave you as I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. Amen. The good news translator said, the Lord will protect you from all sickness and he will not bring upon you any of the dreadful diseases that you experienced in Egypt. Now hear this and hear me well. From this day, whatever disease you carried from Egypt as a non-believer, not one person will be without sickness after now. Yeah. The day you left Egypt, God said you left the camp of the devil. You are not permitted to live with sickness. Sickness is dropping off someone if you believe it, it is dropping off your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But if you want to live in health, you need wisdom. You need what? Wisdom. wisdom. In Proverbs 3 and verse 13 and 18, say, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get understanding. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is the one that retaineth her. It's not enough to get wisdom. It's important you retain wisdom. Healthy living requires you live wisely, physically, spiritually, mentally. If you want to live healthy, wisdom demands you live wisely, physically, live spiritually wisely, and also mentally. Now, what is wisdom? Based on today's teaching, I define it this way. It is kingdom sense. Applied in thinking, resolutions, and actions in order to experience God's provisions. It is kingdom what? Applied in thinking, resolutions, and actions in order to experience God's provisions. It is the ability to make sensible decisions or judgments and following through to gain desirable results based on the knowledge and understanding of God's word. Wisdom is applying the knowledge of God's word in life situations. He that hear the sins of mine and to them. Matthew 7 24. What is health? Health is the ability of maintaining a state of physical and mental well being. A state of maintaining physical and mental well being. 
Wisdom for healthy living simply means the ability of making sensible decisions and acting on them based on God's word in order to maintain a physical and mental well-being. The word you will hear today will give you that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Miracles are good. They can offer you instant healing, but you need wisdom to maintain a good, healthy life. And wisdom is the principal thing. With all you're getting, get it. God wants you to enjoy good health, not seasonally, not periodically, but what? Continually. He said, I wish above all things, told John 2, that thou mayest what? And be in health, not occasionally, not periodically, but what? Continually. That is his wish. Even as your soul prosper. I know the soul is made up of will, emotions, and the mind. So God is saying, if you must enjoy sound health, your mind must be upgraded to know what God says before you can enjoy sound health. <laughs> Somebody get what God says here. So your mind must absorb the word of God before you can enjoy sound health. Now hear me, hear me well. Knowledge is the nutrient that qualifies wisdom to operate. So it's not enough to just say, I want to enjoy sound health. No, it's not a gift. Is that a what? There's no gift of sound health. You have to improve your mind to enjoy sound health. Your mind must be well informed. Now, let me say this to you. There are some reasons why you need the wisdom of God for healthy living. Why do I need wisdom of God for healthy living? I'll give you some of the reasons so you know why. Um, number one, your body is to glorify God. Your body is to do what? The reason why, one of the reasons why I need wisdom of God for healthy living is that my body is to glorify God. God designed this body to glorify God. Does sickness glorify God? 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So this body is to glorify God. Without your body, God cannot be glorified. Number two, your body grants God access to manifest himself here on earth. My body is the only instrument God can use to reach the earth. Without my body, God can't reach this earth. Now hear this, you know why? Spirits are not permitted to operate on the earth. So without you, God cannot do anything on the earth. That's why you need to be healthy. A sick man, how would God use a sick man? Can you be on your bed and be used? No way. So God needs your body. God needs your what? To manifest on the earth. Psalm 115 verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens are the laws, but the earth are given to the what? To love bread. The reason why the devil is contending with your body because he knows if your body breaks down, God has nowhere to use to reach man. That's why Satan contends with your body. He will not have access to it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So be wise and give him no room. Be wise and give him what? No room. First no Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. He said, know you not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man divide the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy with the temple you are. Once you are born again, God lives in you. Who lives in you? God lives in you. You are no longer empty. And he uses your body to manifest on the earth. So you need this body to be healthy. Number three, your body is your edge suit to be used to carry out God's assignment here on earth. Your body is what? To be used to carry out God's assignment on the earth. You are created a spirit. And that is not visible, but the earth. You need the visible, which is the body. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. He gave breath in the nostrils, but the man became a living soul. And without your body, how many of you can go for evangelism in the spirit? <laughs> is it possible? It's how to go to evangelism in the spirit. You go for evangelism where? In the body. In the body. There's no way you can go for evangelism. That's why people say my spirit is in church. I say your spirit is not in church anywhere. Your body has to be in church. Now let me take it gently. Mm. How I many of you like good life? No sickness? Boy, sickness is not good. It's not good. Tell your neighbor, sickness is not good. Sickness is not good. 
I want to live a healthy life. Now, if I want to live a healthy life, there are wisdom keys to assessing a healthy living. There are wisdom what? Keys to assessing healthy living. I have not taken the first drug for 24 years. What has been keeping me healthy for 24 years? This year makes it 24 years. I have not taken a vitamin to stay healthy. Two weeks after I've been born again, I've not taken any drug. So what are the wisdom keys? I became born again two weeks after. I've not taken the first drug to date. It's not a sin to take drug, please. Never. Take drug if you're sick. But you need to be sick to take drug. If you're not sick, why do you need a drug? And not tell me because you work hard. You know me, I work. That work knows I work. That even work knows what? If you ask work, work will tell you this man works. So don't tell me it's work that's making you to break down. No, that's not true. So what is it that keeps me healthy? I need to tell you. Some wisdom keys, not all, for assessing healthy living. Number one, consistent quality intake of God's word. Consistent what? The authentic all-purpose drug for healthy living is the word of God. A young man became born again. I don't know if he were in church on Sunday when we read that testimony of a young man who had tuberculosis. He said he came to church with tuberculosis. He was getting lean and lean and lean and was going down. Somebody invited him to salvation ministry for the first time. And he heard me teaching that you should read the Bible. And he said he began to read five chapters. Five chapters as a new believer. As a new... Five chapters of the Bible. And nobody prayed for him. Tuberculosis left. He said he regained his body by reading the Bible. There are those who are old cargoes that we hear all this and we never read the Bible. You want to live healthy? You must eat the word. There's no shortcut. No man's prayer, no pastor's prayer can make you live healthy if you don't read God's word. Listen carefully. God's word carries life. Carries what? Listen. Listen. The words I speak to you, they are spirit, and the word is life. John 6, 63. So every time I read God's word, I'm taking life into the body. And when there's life, sickness is dead. It has no space. I come again. You hear this? That's why it's powerful. Form a habit of reading God's word as a habit. As a what? Not reading to preach. Reading to eat. If I sell bread... As a baker, can the bread I sell nourish my body until I eat that bread? So don't read Bible to go and display. Read Bible to eat for yourself. If you feed on three to five chapters a day, you will never break down in life. If you live a clean life. He said, I, I don't have time. <laughs> Everybody has time. By the time they give you bed rest for one week, you will have time. <laughs> which one do you prefer? They won't give you in Jesus' name. Amen. One week bed rest and five chapters. Which one is better? <laughs> because they, I don't know why they call that in bed rest. They should call it bed punishment. <laughs> because you are resting on a six inches spring bed, six inches spring bed. Is that rest? If a man wants to rest, go to a hotel. Not a, hospitals are rest. Don't tell me it's rest. Hey, they go to hospital, don't tell me. The doctor advised me. Tell the doctor told me to go for bed punishment. They don't rest in hospital, they rest in hotel. True? Hospital is for treatment. They don't rest in hospital. That's why they give one small bed. No hospital has family size bed. All hospitals, small bed. <laughs> and they put something by the side so that if you roll, it won't fall off. That's what they're... <laughs> they are telling you you are confined to this small size. No matter your size, no matter how fat, even if you obey, small bed. They say, if you move, on this side, wait you. On this side, they wait you. That's if you want this side, one thing, this side, one thing, like small child. You know, when you're born children, they make sure the bed is covered. So you too, as an adult, they say, this way, don't roll. This way, don't roll. Stay straight. So which one do you prefer? To eat Bible? Now discipline yourself to eat the word. That is wisdom. That's what? That's why we call it wisdom. Once you begin to inject 
God's word into yourself on a consistent basis. The world inoculates, the world immunizes, it makes your mortal body strong and free from sicknesses and afflictions. May that be your portion. Are you getting what I'm saying? God's word is powerful. It's life. It's what? It's life. Check any time you want to break down. Your body is doing one kind. Go back to the world. Without anybody laying hands on you, you'll be well. Mondays, normally, after Sunday service, I don't do activities. Then last Monday, some persons came and took me on matter work for almost four hours. The worst thing is to settle case. That's why we teach you on marriage, because it is easy to tell people not to have problems that to settle marriage. You can't settle any marital issue for two hours. Try it. Anything marriage will take you from three, four, five, six days. So it's better you prevent the problem than cure the problem. So I was settling a matter. <laughs> when I was done, so all I did, I shot myself and ate the word. But I was through with the word. The body made come. Settle with the word. He said, my son, I tend to my words. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Incline thy ear unto my sins. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of the heart. For they are life. Did you hear that? They are what? Unto those that find them and health, 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 health to all, all. So the whole of your flesh, when you read the Bible, it injects health. Hello? When you read the Bible, you know, we, we don't understand. Read the New Testament, 5 chapter. It says, they are health to this flesh. So every, no matter how busy you are, eat the Bible, you will never break down. Say wisdom. Check when you broke down last, you didn't read the Bible. Yeah, I would have read it though, but I, you know, I'm very, very busy. You are very, very busy. Please, so. When the sickness comes to, you will know that you are not very, very busy. <laughs> it will not come in Jesus' name. <laughs> All the people are advised to read the Bible. They say, I'm, 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 my work cannot permit me. When they get sick, they stay some of them six months or one year, so maybe two years have not come out. I told them, man, I said, which one do you prefer? This one you're going to London every year. Two, two, year, two, two months. They kept him in London for two months. He came back. He went back again. Two months. I said, which one do you prefer now? You are busy running around. Now every day you are going back. And when your mind is sick, business is on a standstill. That business you are pursuing will stand still. Even if it's your husband, and men are worse, because women can even be a bit sympathetic when a man is sick. But when a woman is sick, the man will say, hello? Hello? Hello, my wife, I'm coming home. Hello? Hello? Yes, my wife has been in the hospital for some time. Hello? 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 You know why I say hello? You don't know hello? And that girl is calling. Hello? 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 Hello, he said, my wife, hold on, hold on, hello. Is this woman can worry, she's been sick for some time, hello? Hello, he said, my wife, try, eh? He's going away, oh. he's going away. My friend, find your life, oh, read the Bible, oh. Read the Bible. So many women, their husbands die, they stay for life. How many men, their wives die, stay for life? Yeah. Once a woman died, there and then, even her closest friend will be doing the man like this. She don't go, I dare you, she don't go. <laughs> Read the Bible, oh. you won't die. Yeah. If you see many women who are widows, they stay for life. Not men, no. Yes. Even men of God, as a woman, they go, they say, I beg, I don't fit. Somebody go cook for them. <laughs> My friend, read the Bible. My husband will allow me to read the Bible. If you die today, he will marry next week. <laughs> you won't die, oh. Read the Bible to stay healthy. So all this every day, I have a private doctor. It's no pride. It's no pride. That's not special. My, I want to see my private doctor. Don't think you have plenty of money. Which one do you prefer? To stay healthy or private doctor? They push your waist like this. Every time they push your waist. 
That's what they call the patient. They push your waist like this and they do like this. <laughs> they cut the wound. They cut the wound and do like this. Do like this. Say, Ay. <laughs> say, sorry, 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 sorry. He say yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Say, no matter your guy, she will tell you pull your trousers down, pull it down. <laughs> And you pull down. So do like that. I mean, shh. Say, sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't take that over. Say, ah, this thing is painful. <laughs> My friend, read the Bible. Oh. I've not taken injection since 995. Read the Bible. Oh. Read. Read the Bible. That is wisdom. We are teaching wisdom now. That is wisdom. wisdom. So you can live your life the remaining days healthy. Do you like that? And I decree, as you begin to obey, sickness will leave you forever. Yeah. If you don't want to be sick the rest of your life, let me read Psalm 119, verse 93. The Living Bible. Let me look at the Living Bible. I will never lay aside thy laws, for you have used them to restore my joy and health. The word of God, you have used it to restore my joy and health. Hmm? You will say bye-bye to sickness for life. For life. Hey, pastor, read the Bible. Don't cancel, 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 then cancel your life. Read the Bible. Read what? Today, your waist is burning me. My back is burning me. My waist is burning me. I read the Bible. And you will look every day, you are sick, you think it's pride. You know, I'm going to the hospital. The doctor told me to call five times. I'm going to the hospital. It's no pride. Hospitals for sick people. Go there. God has opened the hospital for sinners to go and patronize our doctors. But not you. Every time I'm going to the hospital. You go back, you come back, you carry one card like, like a, a clerical officer. You carry one big file. <laughs> Even if they put in your iPad. My friend, it's okay. Number two. Number two, conscious renewing of your mind. Conscious what? Now, there are many Christians who have faulty perspective concerning living a healthy life. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Change the way you think if you want to live a healthy life. Do you know that Christians will believe God is trying to teach them a lesson through sickness? When they are sick, they say God is trying to teach them. Who told you that? How can God teach you a lesson through sickness? A boy said he doesn't know mathematics. Is it when he has a headache now he will understand mathematics? <laughs> <laughs> the boy doesn't understand mathematics. It's when he has a headache, he said, This boy, you must now understand mathematics. He said, Mommy, my head is spinning me. He said, Now understand mathematics. God cannot teach you a lesson through sickness. That's a wrong word of thinking. He said, guide the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23. You can't take sickness and be healthy. Healthy living begins from where? Your man, as a man thinketh in his heart. So is it. Our, no, listen. Our thoughts are like seeds. You are taught the seed. So when you begin to think that sickness is of God, you are dropping the seed and the harvest will be sickness. Stop thinking rubbish thoughts of sicknesses and diseases. You know, everybody falls sick in the world. Now, let me tell you how powerful it is. Thinking has to do with information, negative or positive. Now, there are people who believe that once there's dust, they must have cold. So once dust comes, they say, ah, I have this flu because of car. The car is because of the dust. You know, I have flu because of the winter. You know, when there's a change in weather. You know, the reason why this boy has high temperatures is because he's growing teeth. <laughs> in this scripture, the blessing of the Lord make care to reach and added no sorrow. They informed you that teething makes fever. If you don't think it, the child will have teeth without fever. Information has power on your mind. I'm spitting because I'm pregnant. My legs are swollen because it's a sign 
of pregnancy. Is there every pregnant woman whose leg is swollen? Check what goes on your mind. Hmm? Check what goes on the what? Think on the word. Think on what? The word. Think on the word. Life story, when we came to Port Harcourt, newly to start church, the life system was very poor. Thinking has power. Life system was what? Was very poor. So all of a sudden, I went blank. I was not seen. When I opened the Bible, I was not seen. I was living with poor light. It was poor. So it was avoided with candle. I was living with poor light, so all of a sudden I went blank. I couldn't see anything. If I put my eyes on the white paper, it would take me minutes before I can see. And you know, naturally, the next day they would tell me his glasses. True? One scripture brought me out. What do you think is powerful? I saw in Deuteronomy 34, verse 7, that was the only scripture I meditated. I said, and Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes was not dim. That was the scripture that brought me. I ate the word, and at 120, he never had problem with his eyes. So I'm in a better covenant. I was meditating that scripture. My eyes did that. And I got my sight back. But if I was thinking, you see, what do you think matters? If I began to think, it was poor light. Poor light. Poor light. My eye will be good dimmer. Poor light to go dimmer. Poor light. What are you thinking? What are you worth? You can't live in health if you think the wrong thing. Mm? What is occupying your mind right now? Occupy your mind with the word of God. Joshua 14 verse 11 says, Good news translation. And I'm just as strong today as I was when Moses sent me out. That Joshua was speaking. I am still strong enough for war or for anything else. At 80, we said I was strong as what? 40. Stop thinking old and stop thinking sickness if you want to live a healthy life. Think the word of God. It's not every time it's prayer. What are you thinking? Is everybody right now has chicken pots in this house. That means... You too will have chicken pots. It will come. What are you thinking? There's Ebola, Ebola, Ebola in Congo. Let it not come to Nigeria. Why will you think that it will jump from Congo to Nigeria? <laughs> Some people just think like this. I say, it's like I, I want to have fever. <laughs> he said, how do you know? I'm just thinking it. He said, how do you know that you want to have fever? I just think that it's like I'm thinking it like I have fever. How, how can you think that you will have fever? Is it right? See that like this. I'm just thinking, you know. Even some people think that they will die. They say, I'm thinking like I, I want to die. I said, my friend, are you okay in your head? <laughs> Stop thinking nonsense. You know the thinking syllabus? Philippians 4.8. Outside Philippians 4.8, don't think. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what I can also think. And Satan is able to attack you based on what you think. It's not everything. Most things you have attack is just what you are thinking. So mind, if you want to live in health, mind what you want? Think. Be careful how you think. Look at it. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Mm? Now I close with the third one which is very important. We are talking about healthy living. We are talking about what? Healthy living. It's not just... Uh, I cast you devil, I cast you devil, I cast you devil, I cast you devil. I cast you devil. Some devils you are casting, is even your thinking is wrong. After you finish, you say, see my eyes, they are red. Oh. They are red, oh. they are red. Oh. They are red, they are red. Call doctor, they are red. <laughs> Number three, discard negative emotions. Discard what? Emotions are different from thoughts. Some people worry and bother themselves about things that will never come to pass. Never entertain negative emotions. Negative emotions are like poison and they are toxic to your body system. There are people who even claim that it's their nature. I will tell you some of them. 
Let me tell you a few of them and how they affect your system. A, anxiety, worries. They are negative worth. Don't worry about something you can't change. Anything you can't change, forget it. Why are you worrying about something you know that you can't change? Now, if flight left, you can't change it. They will not bring the flight back. Forget it until when your time for flight comes. You went, you missed your flight. You now, from there, your temperature rise up. You can't change it. The flight has left. Don't worry about it. The flight can't come back. Forget it. He said, do you know what? This flight, I missed it. The flight has gone. You're worrying about a flight that has left. Will you bring it back? No. People worry over nothing. Proverbs 12, 25. Let me read the English standard version. I like the English standard version. Look at it. It said, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. Don't try to fix everything. In the process, you bother yourself. Some people in the process even had a heart attack over nothing. You are owing. Say it to God. Say, cast your bodies upon. Did he say, carry your bodies upon your head? For he cared for you. He said, be anxious for what? Nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. He said, do not be anxious about anything. New International NIV. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. The truth is, anxiety and worries has never changed anything. Stop putting your undue pressure on your life. Your owing, present to God to help you come out of debt. Sow your way out. You now sit down like this. So what happened? Hmm. If I know what they waiting, I go do. <laughs> okay, now that you are warning, can your worry change the situation? <laughs> Pastor, if I know what they waiting, I can't do now. Okay, you are worrying over something you cannot change. You have not paid children's school fees. You are thinking of the student's school fees to worry about. My friend, forget it now. Present it to God. Say, Lord, help me. Let me show you a scripture that will change you for life. Job 5.2. Good news translation. To worry yourself to death with resentment would be a foolish, senseless thing to do. Thank you. Stop that worry and live long in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you are worried for accident now. You are, even as I'm teaching, you're worried about accident. Now, you worry your accident, will that change the situation? Present it to God. In the process, your BP just go up. Why will a Christian have high blood pressure, hypertension? You are just being hyper plus tension. That's why all this is <laughs> Why will a believer have what? Hypertension is a compound word. Hyper plus tension put together. So the easiest way to cure you is to remove the tension from the hyper. And you'll be free. Hyper, you are very hyperactive and your tension is too much. So remove the two from your life and calm down. You are hyper. You know when your child does it, say, this boy is too apparative. It's too hyper. You are hyper. Every small thing. <laughs> the, the tension around you is so much. You combine the two. That's why your BP is going up. How can I have high blood pressure? For what? What is worrying your pressure? My friend, calm down. Number two. The B. B. B is bitterness. B is what? These are the small, small things that are causing sickness. Bitterness. Bitterness. Look into the list. Any man fail of the grace of God. List any root of what? Bitterness springing up trouble you. And there are many bitter. Bitterness is another subject of the devil to keep you in sickness. That was what killed Haman. You know Haman in the Bible? That was what killed him. Somebody shout testimony. He can't laugh again. <laughs> bitterness and bitter's life. It destroys people before they destroy. My friend, free yourself. Someone said, I just bought a new car. He says, thief. Thief. <laughs> Do you know that book cannot sleep because of another man's promotion? <laughs> that was a man's problem. That somebody, Mordecai, was to be promoted. He could not believe it. Say, Mordecai, when you know bitterness, he said, even this one, 
Let God bless me. Already you are working bitterness. See this one, no, sir. This one, God is blessing this one. Me, I have not been blessed. You already work in bitterness. What makes you believe that you, that person cannot be blessed except you? He said, look at this one, no, sir. This one too is blessed. What on my own? Watch it. You are working in bitterness. Because anyone can be blessed of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It affects body. It affects what? The body. He said, it defiles you. And a defiled man cannot live in health. See, envy. See is what? Bitterness and envy are not the same. Proverbs 14, verse 30. A sound health is the life of the flesh, but envy, the rottenness of the bones. Envy, envy and jealousy endangers your health. Stop being jealous over your brother and sister. Even the church now, stop being jealous. That God has lifted somebody, please rejoice with them in Jesus' name. Some people are almost sick because of me. <laughs> a pastor came to me long ago. We have not did that. I wonder why we are the pastor we do now. We have not did this level. Board generator, one thousand KV. He says, sir, I was passing and I saw that one thousand. I don't know what you are doing that we have not done. <laughs> I don't look at him. I said, this is my problem. It was very serious. He says, I don't know what you're doing. That We have not done that. I just passed. I saw one big generator around there. <laughs> My friend, some people can never come out of sickness. <laughs> you hear me now? Very soon, they will envy you. Yeah. I said, I will still envy you. Yeah. Because said, they envied Isaac. The one will envy you. Yeah. This one, they are complaining. Eh? God will lift you. You will be in the envy. Yeah. This is why you pack Honda, they are shouting. You pack Rolls Royce, they are shouting. You pack aircraft. <laughs> A miracle will happen this service in your life. The world will envy you in the name of Jesus. And the Philistines did what? Envy him. I want to use it to prophesy. You don't envy people. Let people envy you. Do you understand the difference? You don't envy people, but let others envy you. In Genesis chapter 26, for God to tell me, look at this. He said, for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great store of servants. That means house boys were stores. Ooh, not domestic here, but after now you're shouting. He has stores. He has what? Of people, the ones carrying shoes are different from the ones carrying suit. The ones carrying suit are different from the ones carrying ties. The ones carrying ties are different from we have stores. Hard what? Of servants. The one bringing spoon is different from the one bringing plate. <laughs> stores of servants. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. And he said, and the Philistines envy them. People should envy you, but you don't envy people. And he said, we like Isaac, Galatians. We like what? Is that true? So we also enjoy the blessings of who? Isaac. So from this day, I prophesy. Just like Isaac, rise to your faith. The world will envy you. Ekotale gundeblezia kotalaya. Just like Isaac, we'll be bred like Isaac. The entire world will envy you in the name of Jesus. After this service, you will enter the camp of those that will envy you. If you believe that, shall they believe in Amen. Listen, it's a prophetic meeting. When God bless Israel, the entire neighbor, till today, Israel is envied. Till today, the whole Arab world envies Israel, small people. And Isaac was richer than the entire nation. One man. And the Philistines envied him. So to be envied is scriptural. But you don't envy so I can live healthy. But hear me. I speak as a prophet. 
of the New Testament. In the name of Jesus, right in this service, you will be envied. I decree. Do you know whatever God said to Isaac is said to us? And I speak with authority. Everyone need to my voice. Something will happen this same month that will make men and women to envy you. They will envy us in the name of Jesus. I go break it to you. I go tell it here. I speak with authority. Not tomorrow, because God's work cannot return void. Now listen. In the name of Jesus, it's a we like brethren as Isaac. Our children of promise. Our children of what? Now hear this and hear me well. I decree in the name of Jesus. Galatians 4 28. It says, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. How was Isaac? He was envied by the Philistines. Is that true? The man was so rich. Now, when they say envy, you don't know where to make them to envy him. Look at, he said he had possession of flocks, possession of herds. He was the wealthiest man. In a strange land. And God's word cannot return void. No matter where you're hearing this message in the world. This word will not return void. Even if this were not working. By this word. You and I will be envied in the name of Jesus. I command things to turn. To shift, I command times to change, I command policies to change, I command principles to be in line. Everything will fall in line in the name of Jesus. You and I will be envied in the name of Jesus. Nothing can stop what I've declared in the name of Jesus. Somebody will leave this service to be envied. Something will happen in the name of Jesus. I command a supernatural turn. I command a shift. Listen. I'm speaking with understanding. Testimonies have a way of provoking themselves. A man lost a case in high court. In appeal court. He was to lose in supreme court. And he knelt down and said, Sir, it's only God. And I turned and I said, Even if the case is against you, I command it to He said, Sir, it will take only God. And I said, Even if it's against you, turn. And God turned it. By Saturday, there was no hope. By they gave him the judgment before they wrote the judgment. It was no human connection. And I'm speaking to you. Even if things are against you, even if everything was going against your life, even if principles were against your destiny, I command it torn. Where you were forgotten, right in this service will be remembered. Where policies were against you, they will turn in your favor. Every scientific, medical, human. 
command laws against your health, against your business, against your family, against your destiny. Today, pause in the name of Jesus. Pause in the name of Jesus. Pause in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is done. Say, I'll be envied. Say it. Say it. What you don't pronounce can never be said. Say it. Say it. This same moment, everything is in my favor. Go ahead and prophesy over your life. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Things are falling in line. Things are falling in place and places. You already have a goodly heritage. In Jesus' name. Who? You know, health and wealth go together. Nobody will be time sick anymore. The world is full of unrest. Money has failed. Human intellect is not working. You need Jesus. In him you will find peace and rest. Jesus said, Come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those who are not born again say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Right now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. To watch our live services, visit our website at If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call. You can also stay connected through any of these our social media accounts. This message is brought to you by Salvation Ministries Home of Success.